In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to use level of detail expressions to return the latest, previous, and prior month sales. So first, let's take a look at our data. So I'm going to drag order date to the rows, and I'm going to pick continuous months, and then change it to discrete. This helps me see every month and year together. And I'm just going to put years in the table. Now what I want to do is I want to return the latest month, which in this case is December 2015, the previous month, which is November 2015, and the prior month, which is October 2015. So how can we go about doing that? Well, first I'm going to create a calculated field. I'm going to call it latest month sales. And it's really, it's a pretty, it's a pretty straightforward calculation. The first thing I want to do is, uh, in order to get the latest month, I know that that's going to be a level of detail expression that is just simply max of the date trunk. And I want to truncate to the month level. And I want to use order date. So this is going to return for me the latest month. And then what I need to do is I need to compare that to the uh, to the month that's in the view. So to get the month that's in the view, um, I would simply do, uh, I want to do if the date diff, so the difference at the monthly level, so let me remove that. And then what I, my start date in this case is going to be the month that's already in the view. So that's going to be a similar expression to my de level of detail calculation, except I don't need the the max for the level for the uh, I, I just want to return the value itself. So I'm saying if the difference between the month that's in the view and my um, uh, my my overall latest uh, my my latest month overall, if that's equal to zero then sales end or I could do else zero but I'm gonna for now I'm just gonna leave it as sales and what this is telling me right here in this in this expression here is compare the dates at the monthly level and if the date that's in the view is equal to the maximum month then return sales so let's see what that does so I'm gonna drag uh, latest month sales into the view and there we go. Let me swap these around. And now I have a new column called latest month sales. Let me, I can probably drag that down a bit so you can see it a bit better. Okay, maybe make it a touch wider. And you'll notice when I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I only get a value for December 2015. Great. Okay, so to get the previous month sales, I'm going to just duplicate this field. I'm going to edit that and I'm going to call it previous month sales. And now I'm going to say if this is equal to 1. So the uh, I'm one month different. And let's put previous month sales onto the measure value shelf. And now you can see we've got 256 and, zero and uh, 256, which matches our sales for November 2015. And then I'm going to duplicate that one more time. And I'm going to call this prior month sales. And now I'm going to say equal to two, so I'm two months apart. Put that in the view, and there we go. We have our three months. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take sales out of the view, and I'm going to take my month out of the view. And I'm left with a very simple table that just shows me the three values. Now what I could do is maybe move measure values to the rows, and now we get three bars to compare. But I would probably rearrange them. I'd probably have previous uh, so that they're in chronological order. But it's really, it's up to you. Maybe I'll go ahead and turn my labels on in this case. So let's, ju let's just call this a um, uh, latest three months. So that's one way you can do it. However, maybe what if you want to actually have the, um, the instead of it saying prior month sales, previous month sales, and latest month sales, you want it to say, um, you know, you want it to say October 2015, November 2015, and December 2015. Well, let's go ahead and duplicate this sheet. And this time I'm going to just put sales in the view. I'm, I'm only worried about sales. 
and uh, this gives me my overall sales. Let me take filters off. And now what I want to do is I want to create a calculated field that is the last three months. In this case, I'm going to use a very, a very similar uh, calculation. So uh, I'm going to actually uh, let me edit my, let me just edit one of these so I can steal the calculation. And I'm going to edit my last three months. And now I'm going to say my date diff of, uh, of that is less than or equal to 2. So that gives me 0, 1, and 2. I hit OK. Drag that onto the filter shelf and set it to true. And now what I want to do is I want to drag order date to the, met to the column shelf and do the same thing like I did before. So I want to do month and year of order date. Make these bars. Oops. Make it bars. And there you go. You'll see the values match 351, 247, etc. But now we have our labels for our months. Okay, so now, um, uh, so, so let's call this latest three months with labels. And then maybe the last thing I want to do is I want to make this dynamic. So the beauty of using level of detail expressions here is that uh, if I get new data, and let's say um, I'm into, you know, I now have January 20, 2016 data in here, this view would automatically update to November 2015 as the prior month, and then December, and then January. So that would work perfectly. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my users the option to pick the number of months that they want to view. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this sheet. And let's say user defined months. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, I'm going to create a parameter. I'm just going to say choose, or I'm just going to call it how many months. I'm just going to make it an integer and hit OK. Let's show that parameter control. And now we see, uh, we want to see how many months uh, the user wants to view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my last three months calculation. Edit that. And now I'm just going to call this last n months. And instead of this being 2, I want it to be, uh, instead of it being less than or equal to 2, I want it to be less than the value of my parameter. The reason I have to do less than is because my, uh, my, um, my user is going to enter, for example, 1, 2, or 3, and that's the number they expect to see where the date diff is 0 based. So it's kind of offset by 1. So hit OK there. And then let's just replace this on the filter and select true. And now that it's one month, you can see that my user can only uh, only sees December 2015. Well, uh, let's go ahead and maybe type in another value here. Let's put in like five, for example. And you'll see now we see the latest five months, or I could put in 20. And we see the latest 20 months, and so on and so forth. Maybe the last 10 months, whatever they want to see. So the, this way you're using a parameter to help your user determine how many months they want to see. So I hope you found that helpful. It's a really uh, level of detail expressions can be really handy for in, in this particular case. So um, if you have any other questions, please just let me know. Have a good day.